Hello and welcome to my video today. This is going to be a part two or update video for the battery tender installation that I did several months ago. I consider this a version 2.0 of the setup and what I'm going to show you today is how to install it on the Fisker Ocean. First of all, I'm going to be using a new battery charger or battery tender. In this case, it's a high powered charger and it's switchable between 10, 20 and 35 amps and it's variable even under those settings. So this is one that I've been using for the last several weeks and it's been working very well with the car. In addition, I'm going to be changing the wiring that connects from that charger to the 12 volt battery directly. It's going to be a much thicker wire. And third, I'm going to also show wiring that can be also attached to this that will allow you to jump a vehicle. So basically this new version of the battery tender setup will allow you to do a slow trickle charge battery tender. It will allow you to jump start the vehicle and it will also let you use a donor battery when you switch out the old battery with a new 12 volt battery. So it's multi-use. I think it's a lot more flexible and not every owner needs to do this, but I think it's something that is nice to have. If you do have a weakened 12 volt battery in your car, this may be good to install. So that said, let's get started. Here's a closer look at the charger that I purchased. This is a 35 amp smart charger and it works with 12 and 24 volt batteries. For the Fisker Ocean, I would press the mode button until you see the AGM light up, since that's the correct battery to use. And then the switch over here, you can set for any of three settings. The minimum is 10, the middle is 20, and the high is 35. I keep it on the 10 for right now. And what it'll do is it'll use up to what it thinks is necessary to charge the battery. In maintenance mode, I've seen it as low as one amp. So it, it cranks the amps as needed or lowers them to what's needed for your battery. On this end, we have a six foot cord that plugs into a regular NEMA 515 outlet. And on this side, we have what's called an XT60 connector. And I purchased an optional cable for that that works with this connector. And this is a heavy duty 10 gauge cable that supports up to 35 amps with this fuse. And I purchased this because I wanted to have a higher amp solution than the current one that's in the car. So this is a nice, basically three foot section of cable that will get you close enough to the car so that you can connect it to the SAE cable that is already mounted that I'll show in a little bit. So this can be connected to that and when it's not being used, you just disconnect it and on the car's end, you just place the all weather cap over this, the SAE connector, and then you should be good. It's, it's fine to drive around with. And then, of course, this connection here is going to be inserted like this. And then there's also a fan here for cooling. And on this side is another fan and we have the on and off switch. And that's basically it for this charger. So I need to use this thicker gauge wiring because it's needed due to the high amps from a tender charger that I'm using like this one. And also if you're going to be using a donor battery or a jump starter. So I suggest the 10 gauge is a good thickness to use for the wiring and only use the amount of wiring length that you need to get this project done. For example, I'm using three feet, which is the perfect length 
for what we're trying to get done today. And be warned, if you try to use this high powered charger on the existing thinner wires that I had in the previous setup, you're gonna blow the fuse on the wire. The ones that were made by the battery tender company that I had in the original video have a max of 7.5 amps. So anything higher than that is gonna blow the fuse. So that's why we're gonna be using this thicker cable. The original cable I think was either 16 or 18 gauge, which is pretty thin. So 10 gauge is a lot heavier, thicker cable. So I opened up the hood. If you need any help with opening the hood, I have a video up here that shows you how to do that. But once the hood is open, the 12 volt battery is right in this area. And what I did is I removed the existing wiring that I had and I installed new wiring. And in fact, the way that I did it now, I have improved this so that this cover now can stay on without a zip tie. What I did is, let me take this off to show you. I made a cut, actually two cuts in the plastic here, and then I bent it up so that will allow the wiring to pass through. And then I can put the cover back on and clip it down with the original clips and it stays in place. And then if I ever reverse the process, I can always bend this down and glue it if I need to. But at least it's a tidier way of doing this without having to use the zip ties. So you see a couple different things here. This is my battery monitor that I've had installed that I'm still using. And we are going to keep that there. So if you had one, you'll keep it there. And what we'll do is either replace the existing tender wiring, or if this is a new one, we'll put new wiring in. And so it's really easy. This here is the positive terminal. So the red lead or positive lead here will get attached to this bolt that attaches to the terminal. You'll loosen it up, the nut on top, slide it underneath and then tighten it back down. And then you'll also install the same thing on the negative terminal that's under here. It's kind of hard to show you. I'll have some B-roll to show you what that looks like, but it's the same thing. You'll loosen the nut and then slide the spade connector for this underneath. So all you need to remember is that the red goes here for positive and the black goes there for negative. And then what you need to do is route the cable. As you can see here, I have some zip ties and I just attached the two existing items that are also attached on this area. So I placed it here, here, and up there so that this wiring doesn't move around. And this wire is three feet long. So it's plenty to reach from the battery terminal and then going all the way to the hood. Now there's several different ways that you could extend this lead. Some people have been installing it with the lead out this way. If you want to put a weatherproof connector on the grill of the car, you can do that and just route this wire towards the grill and then place that there. Or you can route it up towards the windshield, which I had installed in the original video. And I still think it's a handy place to have the connector come out of the car since there's already openings there and you don't have to drill anything or cut anything on the car and it's totally reversible. So if someday you want to yank all this out, you can take it and remove it and you don't have any issues with the vehicle. So like I mentioned, I route the wire out this way. So let me give you a close up view here. I'm going to follow the routing of the wire goes right here by the hood, comes out on this side here, and you can see the end of it has a weatherproof cap, and I just tuck it under here, it stays in this area and doesn't move. So this setup is good for using the battery tender, or even if you want to jumpstart the car, you can use either of those two options with this setup. However, if you want to also have the ability to use a donor battery, 
I recommend a different configuration than a, the one I set up here. So with that, I recommend removing the red or positive terminal connector here and place it right here. So I remove that nut and then put this round eye connector under that nut and then tighten the nut again. And by doing that, it'll allow you to remove this terminal if you ever need to exchange the battery. This can be unscrewed and you won't lose the connection. So I recommend attaching it to this point here. And secondly, I recommend having the negative lead or black wire instead of being on the 12 volt battery, I recommend having it on the bolt that's over here. And if you notice, the battery's grounding bolt is right there from the negative lead goes right to this bolt here. And this one here is also known as the jumping bolt. You can remove either of these bolts, attach that black wire, the round or eyelet connector you can attach there then put the bolt back on and then tighten it up and by doing that you could remove this positive bus bar out of the way and still keep the car energized the 12 volt battery from a donor could be attached to this wire here and then you could take this out, replace the battery, put a new one in while still keeping everything powered. So when you're done with all your wiring, you can take the cover for the bus bar here and then just reinsert it. And it will snap back into place and notice that the wires now come out the side and this stays in place. Don't need zip ties. Then carefully Press on the latch here to lower the hood, attach the two bolts, and you're all set. So now I'm going to show you how it works in this area here. With the connector cover off, you would attach this wire here. And what this is, is a 10 gauge jumper cable. So this would be attached here, and then this end here, this you can purchase these in five foot, 10 foot lengths, however long you need. So this would be attached here and then this would be attached to the donor battery. So you would attach the red to the positive and the black to the negative. And then that would energize the car, keep the 12 volt running. And then if you need to jumpstart the car, just make sure you get a jump starter that has an SAE connector on the end, or you may need to get an adapter. For example, one like this one that this charger has going from this to this. Here is the plug. I have it attached to an extension cord. And then here is the charger itself. I've placed it right here on the windshield. One nice thing is underneath it has rubber feet and that keeps it from moving around. It can stay in one location. And then here is the cable itself. And then the cable from the car is right here. So I'll show you how that works right now. So take the lead from the car and remove the weather cap. And then we just attach the charger to it and this is correctly set for the right positive and negative connections. We have a negative connection on this and a positive connection on here. And if you notice that it matches up with this cable here. So this side is positive and this side is negative. So we attach like this, press it all the way in. And then on the charger itself, we can turn it on. And notice that it's correctly set for AGM. 
It is now charging at 10 amps and it is 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 29C, 14.4 volts, 8.6 amps. So you can see that it is adjusting the amps as needed. And right now it's showing that the battery is somewhere between 90 to 100% is what I am guessing on here. And it will be a little bit noisy since there's a fan running to cool things down. But I noticed it gets pretty quiet once it finishes the charging and just goes into maintenance mode. It's fairly quiet. So you would let this do its thing. So this is especially handy if you're awaiting a update for the car since over the year updates are well known for being very hard on the 12 volt battery. And if your battery is on the weaker side, I do recommend having a tender connected to it. Notice now the amps are down to four. And as this fills up, you're, you'll see the amps go even lower. And notice that it gets quieter as it gets closer to getting full. So when you're done using the charger, just flip the switch on the side to turn it off. At this point, you can disconnect the cable and then just place the weather cap on top. And then this here, I just place underneath the hood area here so it stays hidden. In fact, you can't even see it right now. And then uh, you can just place this uh, in storage. So that's basically a summary of how this battery tender slash charger works with the Fisker Ocean. If you do need to have much higher and faster charging, you could switch it to the higher setting, say 20 amps instead of 10. But for most uses, having it on the 10 amp setting is probably fine. So that about wraps up this video on my new charger setup for my Fisker Ocean. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I have links for these items in the video description if you want to purchase them. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.